guys, welcome back to the Hourglass Battleships page. Today I'm going to be doing part two of Could a Battleship Have Stopped 9-11 Terror Attacks in New York City? So in my last video, I had some comments and some suggestions and, you know, some different things. People were talking about the validity of that video. So obviously, you know, first of all, I'm not trying to knock anybody or disrespect anyone that you know lost someone on 9-11 or any of the victims of that terror attack so let's just get that out of the way all right now number two um you know people are saying things like well you know they have to be at battle stations or they have to be spooled up and you know the time delay 100 percent agree i agree with everybody on that statement Take the video for what the content was. It was, could a battleship in its 1991, 1992 era configuration have stopped the two planes from crashing into the World Trade Center um, or not? So that's all that video was entailing. It was just about the armor of the Iowa's at that time in their life. The Navy was never really big on the battleships anyway. So you'd have to understand back in the 60s when the New Jersey came back into service, there was a lot of pushback about that ship. Okay, the New Jersey could do a lot of things that carriers could not do and vice versa. You know, the New Jersey, New Jersey couldn't do everything that a carrier could do. The gunfire support role on a coastal area of a place like Vietnam, you know, New Jersey could reach around 75% of the military targets in Vietnam. Okay, that means round the clock, all weather strike. You got to remember, you know, aircraft carriers, uh, missile development, a lot of things that we have now started during the Vietnam era. Not aircraft carriers, but aircraft carrier development, uh, weapon development, procurement. It's all money. It's always going to be about money and fighting future wars. And let's be honest, you know, we have to be looking towards the future. So carrier admirals and, you know, aviators are not big on the battleships. Yes, they're beautiful and they're a great centerpiece but to them, they represent a hazard towards the future. And some people are stuck in the gun club. Uh, they're stuck in an older time. Much like, you know, to me, I compare it to the Phantom, the Phantom Fighter. You know, when the Phantom first came out, they didn't have a gun on the Phantom. It was like, oh, we won't need a gun. We've got missiles. There's no need for it. Well, they figured out they needed a gun on the Phantom, you know. Missiles don't always work. Guns don't always work. You've got to have some, uh, you know, backups. And that's what they ended up doing. The Phantom Phantom eventually got, you know, a Gatling gun. So, 20 millimeter Vulcan. But anyway, so looking on into that, you know, when New Jersey was brought back into service in the 60s, it was a very austere uh, renovation. So her 20 millimeter rounds were all left. The 40 millimeters were taken off. The 20 millimeters were taken off. There wasn't even a Marine detachment on board. They trimmed the fat. They got the ship back into service. You know, they did a really good job, but they didn't spend a ton of money. They spent money, but it wasn't a ton. All right, now, when they were brought back into the 80s, of course, they were modernized. You know, uh, things were taken off. Older systems were placed. Uh, you know, the five-inch mounts were, were cut out some. Four of the five-inch mounts on each of the ships was replaced uh, so they could add a missile deck for the Tomahawk, Tomahawk ABL launchers that pop up and the Harpoon uh, anti-ship missiles. And, you know, they added four 20-millimeter Phalanx cannons. So, knowing what I know and having spoke to people in that community, upgrades for the for the battleships were probably going to really be limited to propellants and shell types you know later on in other videos we'll talk about ship propellant and whatnot but the shells were old and the powder was extremely old okay powder was made in silt bags and some of the bags were molding and degrading you know if they weren't stored at proper temperatures they could degrade even further which caused problems on down the road it caused the shells to not be as accurate uh, you know they even remixed some of the powder lots at one point you know new jersey fired some mixed powder lots uh, off beirut which caused erratic shell dispersion you're messing with a chemical makeup which caused those things 
to have erratic ballistics. I'm not a ballistics guy. I know ballistics fairly well, but not to that extent. But again, future videos. So all that said is to be saying this. Based on what I believe about the Navy and about how they feel about battleships and how people who run those programs and weapons procurement think, there was not much possibility of them being super updated. But there was a plan. There was a plan to remove the ABLs and to work on the upper superstructure and around the missile deck and gut them down and replace those areas with uh, Mark 41 VLS systems, which the VLS is the vertical launch system. Okay, now I say that to say this. Uh, with Mark 41, you know, the Aegis combat system is something that would need to be used the Mark 41. However, other ships uh, did have the Mark 41 system, but they used a different um, computer system to run it. And I'm going to get into that in just a second. So, my idea of this second video is if the Iowas had been updated, okay, into a more modern anti-aircraft defense platform, which, in my opinion, they could be. I think they should have been. Uh, could they have stopped 9-11? Okay, once more, remember, this is just theoretical. This came in off a of suggestion. I understand... And I hope everybody else would understand that in order to stop that, they would have some, they would need to have an early warning. The crew would need to be at battle stations in there in New York Harbor. You know, uh, I don't know if you've ever been on port call, but those ships are pretty empty. There's still guys on board, but it's a skeleton system. And, you know, they'd have to be more manned and ready. And plus the ship would be sitting at anchor in the harbor. Now at anchor, could the ship engage with its missiles or the Fainlax, absolutely. But you'd have to be manned and ready or at least have some sort of combat engagement team going on. But I digress, this is just theoretical. So using the modern updates that they had planned or with the rough sketches, could it shot, could it have shot down any of the incoming planes? All right, well, in the 80s, the USS Vincennes mistakenly shot down an Iranian airplane, and it was carrying a lot of passengers on board, and it was a huge international incident, which was a terrible tragedy. Of course, they mistakenly identified the Iranian flight as an F-14, and for those of you who don't know, we did at one time sell F-14s to Iran when we were friendly with them. So they believed it was an F-14, even though the F-14 was air-to-air -air only at that time, there were reports that thought that maybe the Iranians had converted some of them to fire, you know, air-to-surface missiles. Maybe, maybe not. But Vincennes used uh, its missiles and it shot down an Iranian plane, okay, which is a big passenger plane. Um, that tells me even if they weren't out to sea, if they were just sitting still, they could have using those missiles could have shot down, you know, uh, a hijacked airliner. Um, but I imagine it would have had to been a little ways out. All right, and again, you that had to have some early warning. Uh, and I can't even imagine, you know, the protocol for deciding that. That's got to be a, a really hard, high up level authorization. Uh, that was another point that came in now that I bring that up, that the military or the president would never authorize that. And if they had, it wouldn't have been enough time. You know, who knows? I don't, I don't know how you would weigh the value of human life and the people on the plane versus the people at the World Trade Center. I'm glad that I didn't have to make that call. And I imagine it would be a hard call to make. And I'm not speculating on whether you should or should not. I'm just going to leave it with, you know, you let me know what you think. Would you have made that call? Maybe some people would, maybe some people wouldn't have. But again, this is more about the weapon systems at the time and what I believe the ships might have been modified into to carry out an air defense role. All right, so I'm going to do a couple little quick clips on here. We'll talk about the systems, and I hope you guys enjoy.
Now this sketch I've included here comes from a shipmate on the Iowa. This shows what it would have looked like if the ships had been updated with VLS. You can count 96 VLS cells uh, around the weather deck. Uh, it shows how they would have been integrated. You know, it's just a rough sketch. It shows the Seaways equipment rooms, but you can see it brings the VLS count to 96 missiles. Now, the VLS containers, they can take different, you know, type of missiles and whatnot, but just focusing on the RIM-66 standard missile, which is what it would have been in service around that time, you know, it is got a dual thrust, solid fuel engine with a three foot by six wingspan, operational range of 40 to 90 nautical miles. Uh, you know, it travels at Mach 3.5. So this thing is moving, it's what was used by the Vincennes to knock down the Iranian air flight. Given enough time and warning with this missile system online, you know, it's more than obvious that the planes could have been taken out by an Iowa class battleship. Again, theoretical, if the ship had been ready and there had been enough warning and the National Command Authority had given consent to shoot down the airliners, we're not going through that. This just shows, based on this sketch, would it have been able to engage the airliners, and if this had gone through into fruition by this period, then yes, it obviously could have. It was believed that the overpressure of the 16-inch guns firing would cause a system as fragile as the Aegis system to not work. Now, the Aegis was the Navy's, it's their modern advanced combat engagement system it's for dealing with multiple threats, and it was believed that Aegis would not work on the battleships due to the sensitivity of the electronics of the time with the concussion of the big guns. So either Aegis would have been hardened and upgraded to work for the big guns, or the new threat upgrade, or the NTU, would have been done and installed on there. It was on the older ships. I can't say for sure whether the NTU or Aegis would have worked good with the Iowas, but if Aegis wouldn't work, the NTU, which is the new threat upgrade, was definitely a, a, a possible option. So I'm just putting that in there in case people are wanting to say that, you know, Aegis would not work. Maybe it would have, maybe it wouldn't have. I think there's lots of room on the Iowas uh, to harden it up where it would have definitely worked. But that's, again, just my opinion. While dealing with hypotheticals, I would have suggested that the Fanlax comes off the ship and either the C-RAM or the RIM-116 rolling airframe missile be installed. It's the same missile, you know, it weighs around, uh, you know, the warhead weight's around 24 pounds. It's got a 10 kilometer range or 6.2 miles. These were in service uh, in the mid to late 90s. and. You know, the RIM-116 by itself is controlled by the ship systems. When it's in the CRAM version, it is controlled by itself, just like the little R2-D2 mount. It does all its stuff. It's independently operated. Uh, it doesn't tie into the ship stuff. It's on a separate system, based upon what I understand. So this missile, with its range, also probably would have had enough kinetic energy, at least firing in a couple of salvos, probably to take down one or both of the planes if it got to that point. Now, I would believe that the Vulcans would have come off, you know, the Phalanx. These might have been installed, maybe not, depending on where they are around the superstructure, but also it's a viable option if the VLS system had not been installed. It just makes good sense to install one of these or one on each side, you know, mix and match, whatever. So, I just use this as a hypothetical considering a lot of the phalanxes have kind of come off and you're starting to see more C-Rams go on more modern ships just based on their ability to reach out farther. You know, the 20 millimeter Gatling gun has a low range and it's a small round that only weighs ounces. So if you're going to pick one, the RIM-116 or the C-Ram is a definitely good option for anti-air. Okay guys, so that is my opinion again based on a modernized version of the Iowa's past their Desert Storm configurations. Video went a little long, I went a little in depth on some things, skipped a little bit on some other stuff, 
but that's okay. You know, this is just the opinion video based on, like I said, a suggestion that I had or a question that I had. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Do me a favor, like, subscribe, share, comment, send me some email, give me some feedback. Let me know what you guys think, good or bad. Uh, but before you, you know, hate on the videos too much, remember some of these topics are sent in by viewers like yourselves. One guy commented, I'm not even going to watch this. Well, you know, watch it, see what you think. If you don't like it, you know, hit me up, let me know. You can also send me an email at salvosforfreedom at gmail.com. All right. Uh, be sure to like the Facebook page. Go to Instagram. Instagram's blowing up. Like, comment, share. I look forward to talking to you guys again. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys soon.